Hello and good afternoon. Um, I had planned to try and do this outside in the pretty sun because it was very sunny outside and it's raining. Like it, like about 10 minutes ago, it started raining. <laughs> so I was like, well, I don't have any more sun. So I can't go out, and then I don't want to get wet either. So here I am. Um, so I hope you guys are doing really well today. I am, of course, excited. I've been looking forward to this, um, preparing for it. And uh, as I was looking over some notes, I was realizing again that the reason why I'm so passionate about like breaking the cycle of perfectionism, kicking its butt, um, doing this workshop and um, educating you is because um, perfectionism is what hinders us. Like it, it's not the only thing, but I will say it's a huge, huge part. Um, Perfectionism is what keeps us stuck. Um, it's what keeps us fearful. It is what keeps us from achieving our goals. And um, it really affects every part of your life. So it's not just like in one area, you know? Um, and I was thinking about it because, hey, Vanessa, I was thinking about it because... Um, it's, it's not just one thing, you know? Um, you can, when you start to break the cycle of perfectionism and break it down and create, thank you, and create um, new positive habits, um, it transforms your whole life. Not, you know what I mean? Like it's not just one area of your life. For instance, um, when I did this before, I was saying that it would help everything, but I was more focused on um, those who were having struggles with, you know, their their health, their weight. They wanted to um, they wanted to uh, achieve certain goals, and they weren't doing it. And I was telling them that perfectionism is probably a big part of what's in the way. Um, and so many people were like, oh my gosh, wow, that's, yes, like, like as they, as I went into it, um, that's, that's the realization they were having. But as I was like rewatching some things and looking at my notes, I was like, it's so much more than that. Um, it is for every area in your life. So, you know, relationships and jobs and um, like purpose, life purpose, all of that, every single thing, um, all those things are not, or they suffer, they suffer from perfectionism, okay, so that's what I wanted to say, um, so I wrote some things down here that I wanted to ask, and so today, our first, our first session is called are you a perfectionist right because maybe you don't think you are or um maybe you don't really know what it is and so that's what today is going to be about so i have questions for you and um whether you watch live or the replay i would love to see some comments and responses that would be fantastic helps me know which direction to go um so do you hustle hard and never really feel like you're going anywhere Right? Like, do you, do you see yourself as a person that's always working, you know, always doing something, uh, but it never seems to like satisfy you. You just, it just feels, um, like it's not enough, right? Like you, you spin your wheels and you, and you don't allow any free time and, um, you just got to do, 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 do. No, I got to get this done, 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 done. Right. But then. Uh, and you may have moments where you're like, ah, I'm being so productive, yes. But in the long run, 
do you feel satisfied? Do you feel like, I'm doing good, you know? <laughs> Your life, okay, well then you're in the right place, right? Okay, so that's just question number one, okay? Question number two, do the opinions and actions of others negatively affect you? Do they bring you down, right? So if someone says something that makes you feel like they don't approve of you, something that is critical or that you take as critical um, or just their overall opinion of you, like, oh, that girl, you know. Um, do those things affect you? Do they negatively affect you? Do they bring you down? Okay, that is question number two. Um, three, do you find yourself measuring your achievements against the achievements of others, right? Now, I will go ahead and shed some personal light on here just because I feel like this is a good one for me. Um, thankfully, as always, right, it's, it's in progress. It's so much better. But I used to be, it was like I could never, ever get ahead because no matter how good I would feel, no matter how like, oh, yes, I did a good job, woo! Then I would look at so-and-so to the right of me and be like, oh my gosh, they're doing so much better. Oh, okay, gotta go. Okay, have fun. I will see you later. Okay, so do you find yourself comparing yourself like that, right? Like maybe you feel good for a little bit, and then until you look at so-and-so and you're like, oh, but they're still doing better than me. Oh, why do I even bother? Right? Okay. So something similar to that. So if you, if that's you, let me know. Do you feel like no matter what, it's never good enough? Right? Everything I've said, like, so say you're a hardworking mama, right? And, uh, <laughs> I'm getting texts right now. And you're you're doing your best to raise your children right, you know, you you want them whatever whatever it is, whatever your goal is for your children and you try so hard, but then there's something in every day or in every week that just makes you feel like you are a failure. Like you are never good enough. You're always going to mess up. You know, um and all that stuff. So it answer that question, okay? So um, if you answered yes to one or all of these, you're probably a perfectionist, okay? So now that you know, okay, yeah, I'm a perfectionist because at least one of those is me, okay? Um, Something that all of these have in common is that lack of fulfillment, that lack of satisfaction. Do you see that common theme, right? So whether it's yourself, whether you're just reflecting on yourself, I'm, I'm like really cold right now. Um, whether you're reflecting um, just yourself and noticing your uh, behaviors, your achievements, and you're just going man, am I ever going to, like, I just, so, what's the big deal? Like, sure, I did this good, but then I messed up right here, so just canceled it out, right? Um, and then the opinions of others, again, it's that not enough, it's the lack of worth and value, right? Um, the third one, measuring yourself, again, lack of worth and value. You're not as good, you're not good enough. Okay, it all boils down to your value, your worth. That's what they all have in common. The never good enough, right? Lack of value, lack of worth. And when you have that feeling that it's never good enough, that it really, really, really feeds into that core belief that you're not worthy of love. You didn't do enough to be worthy. I like to phrase it as earn my keep. I didn't earn my keep, right? So I can't possibly be loved because I didn't do enough, okay? So do you see how dangerous that is? 
and actually how um, destructive it is for your life. Um, and it does hinder your life greatly um, because you're not ever truly living as full you because you're afraid. Um, you're afraid of what people are going to say. You're afraid that if you put yourself out there, it's still not going to be enough because Susie Q is going to still do it better than you, right? You guys, I know this well. I know all of these things so well, but I'm happy to tell you that even though these things might always be a part of your life, um, you know, these negative thoughts and feelings might continue to pop up. Um, you might catch yourself comparing yourself to somebody else and you're thinking, why am I doing that? I already know that's not important, right? The good news is, even if it pops up for you time to time, you know, time, from time to time, it doesn't have to rule you anymore. There's a difference. There's a big difference. And I can happily and confidently tell you that it does not run my life anymore. No. I am very, very aware of what goes on. I'm very aware if I am starting to uh, compare myself or starting to devalue the work I've done. Well, it's still not enough. You know, I'm very aware of that and I do not let it penetrate. Okay? I do not let it penetrate me anymore. I stop it and I say, oh... Yeah, I recognize you. I know you well, but you know what? We're not friends anymore. <laughs> You're not really nice to me, um, and you are a liar. So, bye bye. And then, <laughs> hopefully, I made you laugh right now, talking to my hand. And then I speak truth over myself, right? Um, and we're going to go into that a lot more this week about what that looks like, okay? But for today, like I said, the goal today is one, are you a perfectionist? And two, let's talk about what it actually is. Let's talk about what perfectionism actually is because when you know, you become more empowered, right? Okay, so the first time that I did this, I used this very book that I'm about to pull out right now because it is so good that there is no point in me trying to reword it because it is perfection. <laughs> oh, it is perfection. Um, some of you have been with me since the first time I've done this. Um, obviously, there's going to be little differences here and there. I've evolved some. Um, I have different stories to share. Um, but this book you have probably heard of it. If I haven't made you read it already, you've probably at least recognized it. The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. And I have marked some passages that I'm going to read to you because they are all about perfectionism. And they are very, very empowering. Okay? So, here we go. Myth bust number one, right? Perfectionism is not the same thing as striving to be your best, okay? That one literally spoke straight to my heart when I read it. I was like, what? Um, because, you know, I've heard of being a perfectionist since I was a kid, like, oh, like my aunt. Oh, she's such a perfectionist, you know? And I'm like, oh, wow, okay. Um, and then I I was told like, oh, you're being, or you're being such a perfectionist. Not that I am one, but I was being such a perfectionist. And so I definitely was familiar with kind of what it meant. But through my life, I always told myself, no, I just want to be my best. I just want to be my best. And truthfully, honestly, of course I still want to be my best. That's what I want to be. And I think that's the truth for all of you. We all want to be our best. But the way we go about it is crucial. So we are not going to be our best through attack. We are not going to be our best through negative self-talk. We are not going to be our best through beating ourselves up. Okay? And I know those are pretty much all the same thing, but I like to phrase it differently for whichever one connects with you the most. 
Uh, so when I learned, when I read that, I was like, okay, really? Because I always thought like, well, no, I just want to be my best. Doesn't want God want me to be my best. I'm just trying to be my best. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. I don't know. Last night I got this cough out of nowhere. Like it, I had it and it went away and it was like gone for a day and a half. And then all of a sudden I started choking. I'm like, what the heck is this? I don't even feel like anything's in my throat. Side note, whatever. I just feel like choking. It's weird. Okay. For perfectionism is not about healthy achievement and growth. Okay? That's, it's not healthy. Perfectionism is not healthy. Perfectionism is the belief, here we go, that if we live perfect, look perfect, and act perfect, we can minimize or avoid the pain of blame and judgment and shame. Sorry, blame, judgment, and shame. It's a shield. It's a 20 ton shield that we lug around thinking it will protect us, right? When in fact, it's the thing that's preventing us from taking flight. And that's what I mean um, when I said in the beginning that it's, it hinders us. That's exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Perfectionism is not self-improvement. It's not, okay? Um... At its core, it's about trying to earn approval and acceptance. How does that sound? Does that sound like, oh my gosh, yep, that's me, right? That, remember I said just a few minutes ago about earning my keep? Um, I joked with my husband, it was probably like a month ago. As like I said, I still have these uh, perfectionistic qualities like what do you call them like echoes or residual you know that pop up and I have to I have to be mindful and say oh no and I kind of laugh at myself I'm like oh no 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 that's not true we're not functioning in that false lying mode we're gonna function in the truth and love so um you know I I had done a really good job in the kitchen like I cleaned out the cupboards which I don't normally do like I hate doing that kind of stuff um, it's overwhelming to me. I'm like, oh gosh, can it just look nice? I don't want to deal with it. Um, but I had cleaned out my kitchen, like done the floors and the stove and all the dishes and it looked all sparkly and beautiful and I'm sweeping the, the rest of the house and I tell my husband, I'm like, see, didn't I do such a good job? Ah, I earned my keep. Right? But as soon as I was saying it, I started laughing because he knows, like he already, he knows. And I was like, isn't that silly, babe? Isn't it silly that I'm still trying to prove to you that I'm worthy of love when you, I already know that you love me? Like, isn't that ridiculous? And he's like, yep. <laughs> so, so, but that's, that's the growth part right there. Instead of being like, gosh, he didn't appreciate it enough. Oh gosh. Now, like if he doesn't appreciate that, then, then maybe I'm not going to get the love that I want. Right. At all, I'm telling you, it, it, it's a deep, it's a deep hole, right? And so, um, by stopping it in the butt, like I'm like, look, I earned my keep, and I realized, oh my gosh, that is so stupid. Like, I earned my keep the day I got married to him, or whatever, you know, like I earned my keep before I even met him. Um, I was worthy of love before we even met, you know, and. Um, and it's about like going back to that and knowing that like my value, my worth is in Christ. So nothing I do or don't do is going to make me lose my value because I have accepted like Christ's gift. And um, because I have that, like I am made worthy, you know, I am made enough. Um, all those things. And so it's a matter of remembering that truth. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. So we're, again, we're going to go way more into this tomorrow. Um, today again about, are you a perfectionist and what is it? Okay. I am what I accomplish and how well I accomplish it. Does that sound like you? And you may not say that to yourself, but when you hear it, you might go, oh man, yes, that is what I do, okay? Please perform perfect. Healthy striving is self-focused. 
How can I improve? Perfectionism is other focused. What will they think? Okay, so again, as I'm reading this to you, you may not think that, you, like, you may not go, oh, I, you, might, you might say, I don't think that, I don't say that, but when you hear it, you might realize, oh, yes, it is other focused. So hopefully this is giving you um, moments to reflect and um, be like, oh my gosh, yes, I think that is what I do, you know? Like, I am thinking about how the people are going to uh, respond to it rather than um, how can I improve, okay? And you can ask God how you can improve. You don't need to ask um, or, you know, you know what I mean, okay? Let's see. Perfectionism is a self-destructive and addicted Belief, belief system that fuels this primary thought. If I look perfect, live perfectly, and do everything perfectly, which we just said over here, but I can avoid or minimize the painful feelings of shame, judgment, and blame. I think she said it again because it's so important to know that that's what you're doing. That being a perfectionist means you're just trying to minimize the pain of the shame and the blame and all of that and you're like like all that ugly stuff that everybody hates nobody likes to be judged nobody likes to be blamed and nobody likes to be shamed we don't like it okay but perfectionism will not stop it in fact what it is you look at it this way perfectionism is you trying to minimize that but while you're minimizing it, you're tearing yourself to shreds. You personally are tearing your own self to shreds to try to appease others. And then you finally get to the end of your rope and realize, oh my gosh, there's too many people to please. I cannot please all these people. It never works. I think I'm doing such a great job and I'm like, oh, they're going to be so happy. And they might be happy. And then this person over here is very angry at you because you did this thing. You know, it's, oh my gosh, you can't win. That's why you got to take it back in and say, God, who did you make me to be? What do you have for me? What can I do? I know I'm worthy because you made me worthy, right? I know I'm strong enough because you made me strong enough. I know I'm whatever enough because you made me that way. Help me not to please and perfect, right? Help me to be me, authentically me, okay? Uh, perfectionism is self-destructive simply because there is no such thing as perfect. I want you to think about that for a second because you might go, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. No, really, really think about it. I said this book was perfect, right? You know, that's why I started laughing. Um, this year, so month two, right? This year I've really been focused on the characters of the Bible and trying to get into their shoes um, instead of criticizing them. And it's probably the work I've done on letting go of judgment and perfectionism and all that stuff. But uh, I feel like obviously this is something that God um, has challenged me to do and I'm loving it. I'm loving the perspective it's giving me. And so here's one. This is just the Bible. Here's one question I want to ask you. Besides Jesus, in the Bible, of all the Bible characters, all those, you know, big people and small people, Noah and Moses and um, Samson and uh, Abraham and... Uh, Paul and Peter and all those people. Okay, there's many more. Who of those people was perfect? Who of those people followed God perfectly and never made a mistake? I'm challenging you. The only one I know of is Jesus. Every other story, the people are disobeying, even though they're following God. They're doing their best. They're doing their best and God blesses them. And that's a big message. But they are not perfect. They mess up when God is 
leading them on their journey. Okay? So, I'm challenging you. Go ahead. Try and find somebody that was perfect. I dare you. Okay. So, perfectionism is addictive because when we invariably do experience shame, judgment, and blame, we often believe it's because we weren't perfect enough. Oh, <laughs> that one still will trip me up sometimes. Sometimes. And then I'll finally come out of it and go, oh my gosh, you did it again. Um, it doesn't usually last longer than, you know, a few minutes. Ooh, maybe a half hour. <laughs> but um, I'll be like, like, okay, so let's say I, I've worked really... I worked really hard on something. I'm really excited about it. I'm like gung ho, like today, right? Like this this workshop. I I felt really strongly that I was supposed to do this again. I felt really excited. I promoted it. I sent emails. I did Facebook posts, um, right? And one person showed up live. Okay. Now I know everybody has different schedules, but see, in the past. I would have just been like, forget it. I'm done. I'm just going to hang up. Nobody cares. <laughs> I guess I didn't do a good enough job. I guess I didn't promote it well enough. Blah, 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 whatever. It might be true. But I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on what I did do to bring this about. I'm going to focus on the fact that I got something put in my heart. And I said, okay, I'll do it. Right? Like, I said yes. I obeyed. And then I let him lead. You know, and when I thought, oh, you should probably promote that again, I would promote it, right? Um, but I wasn't going to kill myself doing it because that's a different story. That's a different story. That has to do with my perfectionism too, though. The hustle and hard, right? No. <coughs> I am much happier now. Just following the spirit. <laughs> so um, anyway, I could have like things like this in the past. Um been so down. I mean down. Like I may have done it. I may have finished it. And then at the end be like. I suck. Nobody cares. Nobody. No, it wasn't good enough. Oh. Right. Um, or nobody registered. Oh my gosh. They don't care. Oh. I didn't do a good enough job. Oh. I always went to blaming myself. And I always told myself. So many times. Like I mean. Thousands and thousands of millions of times probably. You didn't do good enough. You weren't 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 good enough. Imagine hearing that millions and millions of times. You probably have done it to yourself. Okay? And maybe by me saying that, it will make you reflect and go, oh my gosh. Yeah. That does sound familiar. Hey, who's here? Say hello. Um, so... I don't do that anymore. Um, I stop myself. If I say, oh, I guess I didn't. it wasn't good enough. I mean, whatever, you know what? I obeyed and I surrendered the outcome to God. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> That's what I say now. <clears throat> so, moving on. Feeling shamed, judged, and blamed. And the fear of these feelings. Hi, Annie. Our realities of the human experience, perfectionism actually increases the odds. Okay. Oh, yeah. Perfectionism actually increases the odds that we'll experience these painful emotions. And that often leads to self-blame. It's my fault. I'm feeling this way because I'm not good enough. Right? So, man, this is so, so, so good. So powerful. And... In just the few things that I've shared so far, I hope that you're already getting excited about the fact that all those things don't need to run your life. That you can just let go of them because they're not even true. Perfectionism is a lie. It is because there is no such thing as perfect, which is what I was just saying. Um, that is something that I marked, but I'm going to save it. Okay. So the last thing I'm going to leave you with is an example of healthy self-talk versus a negative perfectionism self-talk, right? Perfectionism self-talk 
Oh my gosh, there's like someone cutting down a tree. Can you guys hear that? It's like super loud. Woo, that's distracting. Okay, um, so I'm gonna give you an example so you can kind of hear the difference. Um, because like I said at the beginning, perfectionism and striving, healthy striving is not the same thing. So, she says, like most women, I struggle with body image, self-confidence, and have the and the always complicated relationship between food and emotions. Here's the difference between perfectionism diets and healthy goals. Okay, ready? Here we go. Perfectionism self-talk. Ugh, nothing fits. I'm fat and ugly. I'm ashamed of how I look. I need to be different than I am right now to be worthy of love and belonging. Now, you might not say those exact phrases of to be worthy of love and belonging, but I think she puts them in there on purpose so that you can see what we're talking about here. Now, healthy striving self-talk. It's not delusional. It's just pro um, productive. Is that the right word? I feel like I'm messing up the word productive. Okay, so healthy striving self-talk. I want this for me. I want to feel better and be healthier. The scale doesn't dictate if I'm loved and accepted. If I believe that I'm worthy of love and respect now, I will invite courage, compassion, and connection into my life. I want to figure this out for me. I can do this, right? So, um, you can see the difference between the two of those. Um, so I hope that um, if you're watching the replay, you will answer the questions at the beginning and um, interact. I would love to see that. And I'm also going to do, I'm planning to send, um, post a recap. Um, I might not need to. I might not need to. Um, but I will do an email. And um, I just want you to go back to the beginning and, or if you've already started from the beginning, obviously you don't need to go back, but um, answer those questions and feel empowered knowing that perfectionism doesn't need to be the ruler of your life, okay? Um, know what it is and know that even from me as your... Um, testimony that you can kick it in the butt <laughs> and it doesn't need to rip you to shreds and make you feel horrible okay so um i hope you guys enjoyed this first session i will be back tomorrow um tomorrow we're gonna go over uh unblocking like deep rooted fears that you probably didn't even know were there you may know you may not it doesn't matter we're gonna uncover them and we're going, I'm going to teach you how to speak truth over them. Um, because that is the first step in kicking butt. Okay? So, I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I will see you tomorrow.